I can't hear. I can't hear. From home or from here in person, or you're watching a recording of this past work abroad with you today. If you are joining us via Zoom, Linda will be your guide and available to help you with anything through the chat function. I invite to praise the name of our God, to take a moment in silence, to prepare your heart for worship, which will begin with the sound of a bell. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Please, I hope on you is founded. in it. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
You bring to light things hidden in darkness and know the shadow of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your spirit. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand to glorify the Lord. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Forever. Be glorified at home. Be glorified in church. Be glorified in Canada. Be glorified in Be glorified on earth. Be glorified in heaven. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Forever. Hallelujah. Amen. As we stand, let us pray the prayer appointed for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent into our hearts the spirit of your Son. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for readings from God's holy word. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Please join me in praying a portion of Psalm 80 by reading the verses printed in bold. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Kind forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. 
It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall? So that all who pass by pluck off its grapes. The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, Look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let him perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join in singing the hymn which announces the gospel, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Please rise in body or in spirit. to hear the good news of our salvation as it is written in the gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. 
Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise to Christ our Savior. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to be a witness? Often we think of this term as a legal one. A witness is a person who testifies in court about what they saw. The word witness for me conjures up the idea of the witness protection program, of the movie witness, Harrison Ford, hiding out among the Amish. It feels kind of dangerous to be a witness, which makes sense given that the Greek word for witness is martyr. Today, we use the word martyr to speak of those who are killed for their faith, but its original meaning was witness. The martyrs testified, that is also the same word is a verb and a noun. So the martyrs martyred, the witnesses testified, that's how you say it, to what they had seen and heard and experienced of Jesus. That was their martyrdom according to the Bible. The persecution and death that took place afterward at the hand of those who wanted to silence their testimony, that was a result of the division that Jesus speaks of in our gospel today. But it came secondary to the power of their witness, to the power of God. These martyrs are the great cloud of witnesses by which we are surrounded a long litany of ancestors of whose faith time would fail me to tell. A litany y'all heard some of even last week, of Abel, Enoch, and Noah, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of Joseph and Moses. And today we hear about the whole company of Israel who passed through the Red Sea as though on dry land, of Joshua, who encircled the walls of Jericho for seven days before God sent them tumbling down. Of Rahab the prostitute, who had eyes to see that the spies who visited her belonged to God. Gideon and Barak were mighty warriors, but it was God who gave them the victory. God sent home over half of Gideon's army to make sure that Gideon didn't get the credit for winning the battle. Barak went up with the prophet Deborah, but the Lord gave the victory into the hand of the woman Yael, who drove a tent peg through the skull of the enemy. What makes our ancestors praiseworthy, it seems, what makes their stories worth knowing, at least according to the author of Hebrews, is not their glorious deeds, but their witness of God's glorious deeds in their time their testimony about those deeds to their neighbors. Not all of these witnesses became martyrs. In fact, most of the ones named in Hebrews did not get killed for their faith, but their lives testified to the power of God, to keep God's promises, to bring forth children, new generations where there were none, to bring liberty where there had been slavery, to set free from the yoke of oppression. We who are believers today are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses who urge us now to join them 
in witnessing to the power of God in our own day. As Anglicans, we rarely ask ourselves, as our more evangelical siblings in Christ do, about our testimony. Many of us rarely spend time pondering how we would give an account of the hope that is within us. But beloved of the Lord, in hopeless times, we find ourselves called upon to do just that. We have been called into the witness box to share our testimony with the people who have no hope, with those who look around with only fear and despair. Let me tell y'all, my time in the US was kind of troubling. I did not witness just a whole lot of hope there, especially not hope that can be found in anything other than money. The Americans are placing their trust, I fear, in wealth alone. If you can pay the price of admission, then you're golden. You can go and you can do all kinds of fun stuff. If y'all follow me on Instagram, you could see that I did a ton of fun things. But any kind of public amenity, amenity like a washroom or anything that just is for everybody, forget it. It's a mess and a disaster. Proof positive that it's better to hoard what you've got for yourself in hopes that one day you'll be able to afford to get in so you can start buying the good stuff. But the God that I have seen, the God of whom I am witness, does not charge admission to his presence. He has already paid the price of his life on the cross so that absolutely everyone is admitted into his glorious kingdom. It was for the sake of joy that Jesus endured the cross, for the sake of our joy, our eternal joy that is found in life with him, our everlasting lives that have already begun. Why do you think I say at communion, may this bread keep you in everlasting life? Because you're already in it, friends. The moment we open our hearts to faith, the moment we put our trust in him. And so it is my job, not as a priest, but as a follower of Jesus Christ, to testify to that power. Because people need to hear it. They need to hear testimony to the joy that is found in Christ. And we have to be honest, church, that the church's testimony has not always been just super joyful. The church's testimony has too often weighed people down further with shame. It has asked people to sacrifice that which God did not ask them to sacrifice. It has told them that they were not worthy to be counted among God's witnesses. But did you read which ancestors got included in the litany today? Rahab, the prostitute, David, the adulterer and worse, Noah, the drunk, Gideon, the idolater. God's criteria who gets to be a witness sure seems different than the church's has been historically. But maybe our job to determine who gets to join the cloud of witnesses anyway. Maybe that's God's job. Our job is to testify to the power of God, to keep God's promises, to bring forth a new generation when it seems as though the future is lost, to bring liberty where there has been slavery, to proclaim the God who for the sake of our joy endured the pain of the cross, that through him the whole world might be admitted to his presence without our having to do anything to pay our way. The world needs to hear this testimony, my friends. The world needs to hear about the God who loves them that much. No, not in a street preacher kind of way. I got to tell y'all, I laughed and laughed and laughed at the street preacher who was yelling at us on the way into the papal mass when he was here at Commonwealth. We were going to church and he was yelling at us that we needed to submit to Jesus. It was very silly. That's not the kind of testimony that I'm talking about. But our lives, the way that we live, 
bears witness to the God in whom we put our trust. Our lives testify, frankly, whether we want them to or not, about the kind of God that we believe in. We don't believe in a God who shames or turns people away, so why would our testimony focus on that? We don't believe in a God who is weaker than money. So why would we hoard what we have for ourselves rather than giving generously for the benefit of all? Just like Jesus did, the one whom we call the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So I ask you, to what does your life testify? What kind of God does your life point to? Fortunately for us, it is very unlikely that our witness will ever be dangerous or come with life-threatening consequences. But we are still called to be martyrs, witnesses, to testify to the power of God to a new generation. Our ancestors call on us to join in their witness, and they surround us when we do so, that the power of God may be proclaimed in the church, and in Christ Jesus, from generation to generation. Amen. We respond now by standing together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come into our time of prayer, I invite you to adopt whatever position you find most prayerful, whether standing, kneeling, or sitting. May the bishops and leaders of our churches have wisdom and speak with one voice. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the leaders of our country rule with righteousness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May justice be our shield and defender. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the country have peace and the people be blessed. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the flocks and the herds prosper and the fish abound in our lakes. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the fields be fertile and the harvest plentiful. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May we and our enemies turn towards peace. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the love of the Father touch the lonely, the bereaved, and the suffering, especially, especially Rachel. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the path of the world be swept of all dangers. Hallelujah. The Lord of mercy is with us. Hear the words of challenge and comfort to our Savior Christ says to all who follow him. Come unto me, all who are tired of carrying your heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So all of you who repent of your sins, who love your neighbors, and intend to live a new life following the way of Jesus, come with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen you. Let us reverently confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness. 
by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your son. Remake us and lead us by your spirit, the comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, may he remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day. Through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness. We come to your table as your children, not presuming, but assured, not trusting ourselves, but your word. We hunger and thirst for righteousness and ask for our hearts to be satisfied with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you're here in person, please offer to one another a sign of peace. And if you're at home, type your greetings of peace into the chat. Know that we send our greetings to you from here. Well, good morning and welcome again. I am so happy to be home. Oh, yes, today we're happy that you're here. Please do let us know via the chat if you're online or after the service. Get to know days or anniversaries to be today or any travelers leaving town this week who'd like a blow on their trip. Okay, Clarence. All right. Hey, patients. Yes, over there. All right, we've got some travelers. After, oh, yes, Marguerite. Oh, boy. All righty, we'll offer a blessing after the announcements. If you're at home, type your uh, request into the chat and Reverend Tom and Linda will take note of that as well. We've got a busy fall ahead, but before first approaching to re register summer camp, Ray Lynn has put together a really great program about God's neighborhood. So if you have neighbors, if you've got grandchildren, anybody who doesn't normally come to church on Sundays, but is interested in summer camp, August 22nd, to, we would to see Ray Lynn, or you can register on kick off with a green growing Sunday service that focuses on kids next week to help get all kids and as our worship continues to evolve this new phase of COVID I wouldn't call it post-COVID but it's different other in this pandemic we are recruiting more volunteers you'll see our our sheets come out in the near future, but we're also offering some trainings. Training Zoom hosts and sound. So if you are a Zoom host or a board volunteer, you can get a refresher. If you are interested, if you are willing to add your name to that list, and then on Saturday, Day, 20th, we'll offer a training for any volunteers with children for vacation Bible school, uh, the Smith's table, uh, and also for our youth out after school program, United. This is just a reminder and a refresher how to keep our kids and our children and youth programming. I hope you will make time to attend. Trainings are very help us refresh our memories, but also to keep everybody safe. All right, those are all my announcements today. So first for our birthdays and anniversaries and then for our travelers, let's pray. Oh God, our time look with favor. We pray on your service, Mother, you grant 
grow ways and teach them to trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ. Oh God, your glory fills the universe and you are with us wherever we go. Bless us and be with them on the journey and bring them safely home to us. Through this, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Of God Almighty, the Father, bless on you and remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, and safe travels to everyone. Thank you all donates financially to support the ministry of this. We are so grateful to you for your continued support. Whether you give during the hymn we are fixing to sing or online through Interact, in the mail, please know that the prayer over the gift and offers it to God with thanksgiving. I invite you now to join and see for some of y'all might know it from other places in your life when oceans rise.
All things come from you, O Lord. We remain standing for thanksgiving and remembrance. Is the Father with us? Yes. Is Christ among us? Yes. Is the Spirit here? Yes. This is our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. We are redeemed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God supreme over the world creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, and remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, faithful ancestors, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We are made kin through his blood. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. This is the feast of victory. The Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one bread. Draw near with faith. Christ is the host and we are his guests. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as being already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen.
please rise now in body or in spirit and let us pray. Almighty God, eternal Father, we have sat at your feet, learned from <coughs> We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out with your blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of your spirit through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties, we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes, we set on the risen Christ. Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn, The Days of Elijah.